Ready? To measure finger distal interphalangeal joint uh, active range of motion, you're going to take your goniometer, again, place it on its edge on the back of the finger, and uh, with the axis of the goniometer centered over the distal interphalangeal joint. Um, again, with a longer lever arm uh, like this, if the patient really kicks that finger back, uh, you're going to be bridging several joints and you don't want to do that. So again, I might flip this around to make sure we're only measuring one joint at a time. Um, go ahead and straighten your finger back as far as it can go. So for this one, uh, for extension, we're pretty much right at zero, maybe a degree of hyperextension. And then go ahead and make a hook fist like this again and measure that nice and tight. Very good. And have about 73 degrees of um, flexion at the DIP joint. Again, according to the American Medical Association, the um, DIP joint flexion is measured in a hook fist like this. According to the American Society of Hand Therapists, however, it would be measured in a full fist. And that's a little difficult to do because you have to kind of scoot your goniometer in there to um, to measure that. Uh, the difficulty though with the American Medical Association method of using a hook fist is that any intrinsic tightness will limit DIP flexion uh, there. So you'd be measuring the passive insufficiency of the intrinsics and not actually the joint motion.